During day one of the Chloe driver trial, a familiar face appeared at the prosecution table, capturing my attention immediately. Just weeks ago, we witnessed Jeffrey Fogus deliver a compelling opening statement in the Melody Ferris trial, a case that had many of us glued to our screens. So seeing him here again today was a delightful surprise. His presence brings both confidence and a bit of anticipation, as Jeffrey, alongside his co-counsel, successfully won the Ferris case, securing justice for Gary Ferris. Melody Ferris is now awaiting sentencing, which is likely to put her behind bars for the rest of her life. For those who may be less familiar with the Chloe Driver case, I previously made a video explaining the background, and I'll place a link to it in the description below. But in short, this case seems to revolve around a cult-like group, with disturbing details that center on a mother accused of killing her infant daughter. The prosecution is arguing that Chloe killed the baby and then attempted to take her own life, supposedly because she wanted her husband all to herself. It's a twisted scenario, especially when we learn that her husband actually had three wives, with Chloe being his first and longest partner. The other two wives came into the picture afterward, adding layers of complexity and tension to the relationship dynamics. On the other side, Chloe's defense team is arguing insanity, asserting that she was heavily controlled by this cult-like group, particularly by her husband. They argue that Chloe was manipulated, her mental state distorted, making her incapable of understanding the consequences of her actions. They've painted a vivid picture of Chloe as a woman entrapped, exploited, and possibly mentally broken by the influences around her. One thing that's becoming clear already is the depth of conflict between these two arguments, was this a deliberate, calculated act motivated by a disturbing obsession with her husband, or a tragic result of Chloe's deteriorating mental state under coercive control? Having a prosecutor like Jeffrey Fogus on the case heightens the anticipation because he has a unique way of connecting with juries. In the Ferris trial, he came across as both tenacious and fair, someone who deeply cared about seeking justice. His performance, in my opinion, made him quite likable, a rare trait for a prosecutor dealing with such intense cases. Not only did Jeffrey and his team secure a conviction in the Ferris case, but they did so with a level of professionalism and strategy that left little room for doubt. And seeing him apply his approach to the Chloe Driver trial makes me wonder how he will tackle this case, which has its own share of intricate psychological elements and a disturbing cult influence. The defense's insanity plea is also intriguing. By exposing the inner workings of this cult-like group, they're not just defending Chloe's actions, they're painting a picture of her as another victim. This strategy may be effective if the defense can substantiate their claims, demonstrating how deeply Chloe's mind was affected and controlled by the group and her husband's influence. But it's also a risky tactic. If the defense fails to fully convince the jury of Chloe's lack of culpability, they risk losing any sympathy for her. This line between portraying Chloe as a tragic figure manipulated by others or as someone responsible for a heinous crime could determine the trial's outcome. Today's opening statements left me pondering Chloe's potential guilt or innocence, but it's still early to say. The prosecution's argument was powerful, focusing on Chloe's alleged motives and actions, with a clear outline of their case against her. With Jeffrey Fogus returned to the courtroom, his characteristic thoroughness and persuasive style gives the prosecution an edge. But the defense's approach, aiming to delve into Chloe's state of mind and expose the alleged cult dynamics, adds an element of suspense. Whether this argument of manipulation and insanity will be enough to sway the jury remains to be seen. Having a familiar prosecutor in Jeffrey Fogus is comforting in a way, he brings a recognizable face and a sense of continuity, especially given the high-profile nature of these cases. Knowing he and his co-counsel succeeded in the Ferris trial gives a hint that they'll approach this case with the same level of care and detail. I'm curious to see if his straightforward, relatable style will again work to his advantage, especially in a case as layered as this one. And now, we'd love to hear from you all. Do you think the defense's argument of insanity and manipulation is a strong one, or is it more of a last-ditch attempt to avoid a conviction? How effective do you believe a familiar prosecutor like Jeffrey Fogus will be in handling such a complex case? And finally, what are your thoughts on cult influence as a defense argument? Do you think it will sway the jury? This brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you all for watching, and please feel free to share your thoughts below. Take care and stay safe.